I'm Jason Abraham and welcome to the Mendota Ranch. Where are we at? Okay, we're at our very, very first harvest host in Kellyville, Oklahoma. It's Mountain Creek Lodge. We're stopping here for the night um, on our way to a race in Bixby at the 181 Ranch tomorrow. So they raise hay here. It's pretty cattle country. Lady, 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 come here. So we, um, one thing we found out at the camper is like, uh, don't, don't put anything heavy in this back deal. Look at here. <laughs> Our stuff started about to fall out on the highway. So. Don't put your gas can back, yeah, your gas can back there. So we, we repositioned that deal. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. They kind of hit, they got a barn on the other side over here. They're having a party it's like over a there. Venue, an event venue. Yep. And if you stay at a harvest house, they just ask you shop with them a little bit. Like they've got a little, I think a gift shop in their little camper over there. So like spend twenty dollars and got a cool place to stay. Yeah, they're having a party over there tonight. I think it's a family reunion. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we can sneak in. Yeah, family reunion. <laughs> yeah. So they kind of put us over here. Maybe maybe they're expecting. It is. This is Oklahoma. They might get a little little rowdy. Who knows? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so they put us on the other side of dad's house, so, um, we're, which is fine. It's a nice shade tree. Uh, we got, the, got the camper going, got the dogs going, got the, got the generator going. Lola did not travel. So Lola used to be our traveling dog back when we used to show horses all the time. But now that she's old and can't see and can't hear and she's 17 years old, she says, eh, no, I'm not into it. But, um, yeah, so this, this harvest host deal, you, you got, there's no hookups. You got to just, essentially, you just. self contained Yeah, you just self-contained, yeah. which is great for us. So we got another one we're going to tomorrow. After we're racing in the, in the morning, and then we got another we're one. We're going to go to Broken Arrow to see relatives. Yeah, Re Broken Arrow. Then we're going to end up in Guthrie, and there's a music festival, and uh, more, more importantly, there's a, a brewery, right? What's a distillery? A distillery. Cool. We'll go check it out. Ah, right, we'll see y'all in the morning for the race. Hopefully I can run fast and climb fast. All right, see you. I bet there's a thousand, fifteen hundred 1,500 people here. I don't know. Look at that. I can't imagine parking all those cars. I know. Well, so we're in south of Tulsa here. We're at the Conquer the Gauntlet. Um, looks like it's going to be super wet and a super a bunch of freaking people. I mean, there's a bunch. I've never seen this many in the Elite Wave yet. So I bet there's 150 or 200 people. So it's going to be super hard. The, uh, everything is really wet. So if you remember in the Elite Wave, you have to complete every event. So it, that means every obstacle you have to complete. You can't burp your way out. Well, the problem with everything being wet means the handle stuff is all, everything's really slippery, really slippery. So it's going to be tough. There's a lot of water, a lot of water deals. So some sometimes you can just make one obstacle super hard just by, like say, if you have a super easy obstacle, but you gotta go through the water and then go to the obstacle, it can make it like muddy or wet. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. The, the Conquer the Gauntlet's always got the toughest um, obstacles of anybody. So, I mean, they're all, they're, any of them can take you out. So if you can't complete the obstacle, then you lose your belt and go on. The problem is if you've got a bunch of people like we do today, if we run into a hard one, well, then everybody gets in line and you're sitting there for 30 minutes. So that's that's no good either. So we'll see. So hopefully get out in front and hopefully don't get any hiccups.
it's amazing that lady that is standing right in the middle of the racetrack with a little baby on her backpack. That was, that was crazy. All right, so Bonnie caught up to me at the, um, this is called Smooth Criminal. And um, this word, I've done this thing, I've done Smooth Criminal, I don't know, 30, 40 times, and it's never gave me this much trouble. But the problem was, is I switched shoes. I'm running these Nikes, I'm sure they're made in China, and they're real hard sole and got some cleats. And the only reason I went to them is because when I'm running out here, the um, rocks don't hurt my feet. And I never thought about them being super slick and they were freaking terrible. Now, if you watch some of these guys run, like this guy here, you watch this guy, see how he's holding on to the frame? That's illegal. You can't hold on to the frame. You can only hold on to what's green. So, you, so he just broke the rules. And the guy right behind him grabs the rope or the strap. He grabs a strap instead of the uh, bowling pin. That's illegal too. You can't do that's you, that's all a no go. So, I mean, you got to play by the rules. There's no there's nobody really uh, refing this deal. It's just you ref yourself. So, if it's green, you can grab it. So you can grab the bowling pin. You can grab the pipe. You can't grab the rope above it. You can't grab the frame. And, um, yeah, so you just police yourself. So, you know, you're just cheating yourself if you're just cheating, grabbing the frame. So you, I saw tons and tons of people grabbing the frame, but, you know, I'm not going to say nothing. My biggest problem was with my shoes. They're just so slippery. I fell off this son of a gun. And, of course, at the very end, I mean, see how slick they are? So here I'm going again. Now, the problem is my arms are getting really tired at this point. Shoes are still slipping. I've got no traction. It was just wet enough. The grass was just wet enough and those little cleats were just, I couldn't get any traction. There we go. Oh, there we go. I took a fall. So I heard him say that old man fell down. I don't know who they were talking about, but I looked up, I think I was the only old man sitting around there. I can't tell you how many times I've done this obstacle. And I, it just, it's all about those shoes. Those shoes were just junk. And I'm just wearing myself out and just, I mean, I was in a pretty good spot. I wasn't in the lead, but I was, I was up in the front, but now I just got a hundred people have gone by me now. And I just can't gain traction with my shoes. Now the rules are whatever you start with, you got to finish. So if you start with, you know, whatever clothing operation you start with, you can't just lose clothing along the way. So at this point, Bonnie said, take your shoes off. So I took my shoes off. I was so far ahead of all these guys, it's just killing me to watch Yay. everybody go by me. Okay, no shoes again, little traction. See, I got my shoes tied around my waist, because <laughs> no matter what, you have to carry your stuff oh, with you, so. Here's the Pegatron. So the Pegatron, normally in most of the races, I just kind of, I run, try to stay in the, kind of in the lead pack, or close to the lead pack, and then I get to the Pegatron, and this is where I usually go by everybody, but this Pegatron was right after the smooth criminal that I fell off 500 times. So my arms are completely done. And then just to top it off, I grabbed the, I grabbed some brand new pegs and the pegs don't fit in the hole very good. Just watch, just watch how easy, how hard, how much trouble I have getting these pegs in and out of the holes. And the farther I get, the, the tighter the holes get because they hadn't been used because how many people gone that far. I mean, I'm struggling to get that peg out every time. Just trying to get those, that peg in that hole is just killing me and getting it out. My arms are just completely fried at this point. Oh, it's killing me to watch it. So, um, right here, I just can't, I'm just, I can't get the pegs out of the hole. I just, I mean, the pegs are just done. <clears throat> so. Ah, oh, dang it. 
Here we go, go back again. I got some different pegs, but now my arms are completely smoked from trying it. And I, I get along with, I get along better getting the pegs in and out of the hole, but I'm just, I mean, I'm just done. It's just, and I've got a couple blisters on my hand at this point. Here, I think, okay, I'm gonna make it and I miss a hole. I'm done. No, 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 no. Come on, come on. My arms are done. Come on. I fell off that smooth criminal about five freaking times. It's super slippery. And then the Pegatron was right after it. And you can see there's a hundred people there. Almost through. And then the, the holes got too tight. I couldn't get through it. And I just smoked my arms. I'm, I mean, my arms are like freaking done. I'll keep, I'll try to finish though. I had to give up my belt. Dang okay, it. so here I am. I just gave up my belt. So like I said, when you, when you're in the elite race, you have to keep, you have to do all the obstacles. And if you can't do an obstacle, you give up your belt. So I'm pretty defeated right here. I'm just not feeling it on the, on the heavy, on the crank. So essentially this is just a crank deal. It's just a heavy deal. It's, it's not hard. It's, it's just my, I'm just kind of disappointed right now because I feel like I've lost the race. Not which I have. So I'm just like, ah, oh, dang it. I still got at least two and a half miles of race to go to. Or two miles, maybe. I don't know. Okay. That thing's heavier than it looks. That's freaking heavy. All right, now we get to the slack line. Slack line is something, I mean, I've done a thousand times. Normally I just run up to it and go across it. Of course, not with these shoes on. So same deal, my shoes are kind of, are too cleated and wet and just, they're just slippery. And now I'm just pissed. I gotta do this. I don't know how many times I do this, like freaking 500 times, it feels like. I mean, it's not that hard to do. Dang it. But these shoes are just killing me. Oh, it's painful to watch. I'm not gonna quit though. So the funny part about this thing is, so here's a girl that's not even in the freaking elite. She's just a runner, open runner. Ah. <laughs> here we go, get a high five. Sometimes that's all it takes is remind you, we're just here to have fun. We're not trying to, you know, win everything. Now this thing here, this thing here, these monkey bars here are tricky because about every third rung actually spins. You can hear the slack in the pipe. So you gotta be really, you don't wanna be swinging on these things. You gotta be really careful because they, they'll spin and they're hard to hold on to. So that's, you gotta be really careful on that one. And then we're getting here towards the end. So this is a couple miles later. Good job. Stairway to Heaven is always one of the easiest obstacles to do. Well, this one, um, well, you'll see. All right, Stairway to Heaven. This one's easy, easy until I got to the very top and I hit a big old wet spot and I just slipped <laughs> and just fell. Oh my gosh. This is like the easiest obstacle to do for me. But they were just like, I think they'd been, I don't know if it's sweaty armpits or what, but I hit a slick spot up top and just lost my grip. But so anyways, we're wrapping it up here. This is almost to the very end. So the race was four and a half miles long and there's 24, 25 obstacles, just kind of like what I was showing you here, just kind of like what you've seen. So this, so here I'm helping this one girl, she still has her belt. So I'm trying to point out to her which ones are wet and which ones aren't wet. All right, well this obstacle here is just a torpedo, just a fun deal, just to fall in the water. Last obstacle, cool you off. Of course, I was already pretty cooled off. Well, so I finished. That's about it. So, you win some, you lose some. I lost on this one. I feel like I got my ass, I started getting my ass kicked at the heavy carry. I must have picked up the heaviest log to carry. And then it went down from there. And then everything was hard after that. And then I got to the uh, 
It's called smooth crema. Mm -hmm. I fell off that thing. Look at my legs. About five times. Oh my gosh, my legs are freaking chewed up now. Yeah. Look at them bad ones. They freaking, that one, look at that one got a knot on them. Mm -hmm. Dang. Yeah, and then right after, right after getting my ass just totally kicked there at Smooth Criminal, then we had the Pegatron, which is the hardest obstacle. And I felt like I almost got it done, like maybe twice. I was done. My arms are done. Everybody's having trouble. And then, that. yeah, everybody's having trouble. But that's usually where I get ahead of everybody. But It's uh, humid. It's hot and humid. Let's go check on our kids, and we're going to start. We're going to, where are we going from here? Guthrie? Bro Broken Arrow. Uh, Broken Arrow. Then Guthrie. Then Guthrie, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go check on the kids. All right, well, we're back home. Um, we decided not to stay in, in uh, Guthrie for the music festival. Kind of where they had us parked was, was between the stage and the porta potties. And between Lola not sleeping and Lady thinking everybody's attacking us, we decided we'd better just come on home. And then we got plenty of time. It's still just six o'clock and we're home, so. And then we got a horse that got a uh, rattlesnake bit. We ought to go show that and see how she, we need to go check see how she looks. So, so this mare got snake bit. Uh, a couple days ago, or day before yesterday. Yesterday, 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 day yesterday. yesterday. No, yesterday, right before we left. Oh yeah, yeah. Was it yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. We got her up yesterday morning. She'd been snake bit, and so then I gave her some uh, Dex and some Banamine, and she's she had blood running out her nose. Her head was about twice as big, so she looked a lot better. She's still really swollen, but she's breathing good. And she looks good now. I like it. All right, well, we're gonna keep doing what we're doing. I was gonna see if I could find where she got snake bit, but it's gotta be, her face is still super tight. Is it on her nose? Mm -hmm. I'll bet you I don't want to take her nose there. I mean, she's still super swollen, but uh, she's breathing easy now. Yeah, so she's liking the water that, that makes it, the fever in her head feel better. All right, well, good. Well, that's good. Well, snake snake bites is one of the things we deal with. And then I'm giving her Tucaprim, too, or, or Nucaprim. It's called Nucaprim now. They changed it. So. Okay, so the update on the snake bit horse is not good. So what happened was that mare got to looking really good. Um, about three days later, the swelling was completely gone. She'd been eating really good. And we had her off all of her medicine except for her Nucaprim. And then... Um, she started showing signs of colic and and then um, things went down from there and we went to check testing her blood and all that and actually what had happened was her kidneys had shut down from the snake bite and so we ended up losing her so she was a mare that she's real susceptible to like mosquito bites and just, she, she's just real sensitive horse anyways um, she was Luke's horse and I guess the, the rattlesnake bite just shut her kidneys down and so so we lost her so that's part of it though. That's part of the kind of ranching, you know, things live and die. So, all right. Thanks for watching me get my butt kicked and we will see y'all next time. Thanks.